This is the BBC. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Also, good yesterday. Happy Hanukkah and Merry Christmas. Wherever you are, I hope you've had a good week full of cod liver oil strength laughing and homebrew levels of mirth. Welcome to the Comedy of the Week podcast, the home, abode, dwelling and motherland of all things comedy from BBC Radio 4. I'm very excited this week as we have not only a brilliant programme lined up for you, but also, and however, and yes and to that, an interview with the makers of the programme, with which you will hear soon. Programme, backstage goss and live interviews. Let us not forget this is the smash hits of comedy podcasts. So I hope you've had a good week full of sit-ups, press-ups, benches, planks and bur- burpy, burpy things, you know, whatever they are. Why? Why not? And also, why how? And also, because we want to prepare your laughing muscles so there's no straining. We do not like straining here at Comedy of the Week. Warm up! So this week we have a surreal and delightful comedy by three gentlemen who go by one name, Daphne. And to tell me and you a little more, I'm joined by Jason Forbes, Phil Wang and George Fouracres in the studio. Hello, Daphne. Hello. Oh, that was nice. That's quite Beatley. <laughs> like, like when the Beatles all say hi. That's great. Um, is there anything we should know before we hear the show or this particular episode? I'm Chinese. Jason's black. George is white. It does. <laughs> that sounds flippant, but it is actually very important. Yeah, it's there are lots of jokes that you, just, you need to understand. Well, you need to know that we're what Phil has just said <laughs> in order to understand that's what I'm trying to do you think to say. if you don't know you'll be like what why are they making really those racist. racist jokes why are these three white men <laughs> <laughs> being so weird actually that's true if I didn't know and I thought you were three white guys I would I would have been really like, ooh, this is... Radio 4 has gone back in time. <laughs> well, let's hear it then. Snuggle up to the man on the bus next to you, get real cosy. Why not share an earbud? Ask him, he'll share. And enjoy. Daphne sounds expensive. Welcome to Daphne sounds expensive. <laughs> I am renowned opera singer Sir Willard White, and it is my pleasure, nay, honor, nay, privilege, nay, job, (laughs) to introduce this episode of Daphne Sounds Expensive. Arriving now, being carried on a sedan chair by Barcelona's starting 11, it's Phil Wang. Everyone. Hi, Willard. Oh, Lionel, hold those grapes steady, would you? You're getting juice all over my jowls. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, Senor Wang. You know me, messy by name, messy by nature. <laughs> and coming in behind him, held aloft on an ivory throne by the surviving members of S Club 7, <laughs> it's Jason Ford. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Another truffle, please, Tina. Yes, Mr. Forbes. Wow, Jason, how much did S Club 7 cost? They paid me, actually. Pretty sad. <laughs> And last but not least, riding in a bathtub full of baked beans carried by an old lady, it's George Foreigners! Hello, lads. George, how are baked beans extravagant? Uh, carry me, madam. They take ages from scratch. Mary Berry! <laughs> Please let me die. Not till you let me down. Uh, my arms are the- they're giving way! Well, that's one way of doing it. Mmm, good beans, though, these. Great. As if George needed to be more flatulent. Oi! <laughs> George! Good evening, everyone. Together, George Fouracres, Jason Forbes, and I, Phil Wang, are Daphne, radio's hottest interracial threesome. <laughs> You're listening to Daphne Sounds Expensive, the most extravagant show on the airwaves. We rack up the costs, send the bill to the BBC, and cross our fingers. Thank you to our wonderful live audience, and of course to our wonderful live band, for joining us here at the beautiful BBC Radio Theatre. I hope you all had a wonderful Father's Day, and that you got lots of fun Father's Day presents. Jason, you're supposed to give your dad a present on Father's Day. Not in Chinese and Jamaican culture, George. On Father's Day night, the children of the Caribbean and China all get a visit from a mysterious, slightly grumpy man with graying temples who soars through the sky in a flying Volkswagen Passat (laughs) and leaves affordable gifts for all the good boys and girls. That's right, his name is Father Father, but sadly there comes a point in every Jamaican's life when he or she finds out that Father Father is actually just your own father dressed up in a cheap brown suit. (laughs) Father Father isn't real? (gasps) 
Bullard, come back! Oh, Jason, he's only 70. Do you want him being made fun of at the opera by all the other bass baritones? <laughs> so, uh, what did your dad get you this year, Jasoid? He got me a hairy little cylinder. Ugh! Yuck! God, you're not kidding, Jason. That is just a little cylinder covered in hair. What the hell's it for? I'm not sure. He said he was giving it at one of his music gigs. I guess it's some sort of good luck charm, like a rabbit's foot or a monkey dick. <laughs> I like it. Well, whatever it is, it looks disgusting. Get rid of it. But throw it away, Jason. It's gross. Oh, fine. But there's no bin in here. Well, just chuck it out the window then. Ugh. Huh. Open the window first, you idiot. <laughs> Ugh. Huh. What is that thing? It's horrible. There, you happy? Yes. Thank you. Phil, what are you doing clanking about over there? This is my Father's Day gift. Behold, a time machine! G with attached echo microphone! Oh. <laughs> what? Your dad bought you a time machine? Oh, oh, no, no, no. I charged the machine to the BBC. It cost millions. My dad got me this wrench that I used to assemble it. Not that I need it anymore. Huh. Oh! Oh, sorry, Willard. I hate today. <laughs> Phil, you charged a time machine to the BBC. Can they afford that? Calm down, Jason. They say time is money, right? Therefore, a time machine must equal a money machine. <laughs> we'll be able to pay back the beep, and we'll be rich. Not only can it transport us through time and space, it can also, with a push of a button, show us any moment that ever happened in the past. Uh, like George, you remember that time you tried your hand at stand-up comedy? Remember it? I wish I could forget it. Well, keep wishing, brother, because here it is. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. So, uh, what is the deal with white people? Oh, boo! We know what the deal is, boo! Oh, okay, uh, perhaps a different deal then. Uh, but I was uh, walking down the street the other day and Boring. I... Boring! We've all walked down the street, mate! Well, there's nothing to suggest it was the same street, sir. If you'd better wait for a moment, oh, I'll tell you... Mate. Piss off back to Hogwarts! Yeah, oh, well, I assume that's a reference to my round glasses and my broomstick. It's not the first time I've heard that before, I tell you. I can't believe I left my family for this. Why did you leave your family so you could... Look, can we all just calm down and listen to this piece of stand-up, please? Oh, it won't boo, take I long. say boo! Hey, that guy's right. Come on, everyone, let's get a good boo on, huh? Boo! Yeah, boo. No, no, don't, don't, don't boo. Oh, uh, oh, lads, if you oh, just oh, wait for one oh, second. Oh, lads, oh, please, oh, I'm begging you, lads. Oh, please, oh, lads. Oh, oh, that was live at the Apollo, that. <laughs> My first ever TV gig. In retrospect, Phil and I probably should have been more supportive. <laughs> now, well, George, the past is the past. And this time machine will take us there. That's right, boys. I'm programming this thing to take us back in time to medieval China to find the treasure of legendary Chinese Admiral Zheng He. Whoa, 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 slow down. Who? Zheng He, legend of the Ming Dynasty. Diplomat, explorer, and admiral of one of the greatest fleets of all time? Huh, I can't believe this country's ignorance about East Asian history. Well, I'm not ignorant about East Asian history. I've been playing Pokemon since 1999. <laughs> there is no way I'm getting in that machine. Changing one small thing in the past can drastically alter the course of history. Have you seen Back to the Future? Yes. Oh, I must be the only person who hasn't seen that film. <laughs> I really want to watch it with someone who hasn't seen it. I haven't seen it. I guess I'll never, ever watch it now. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Phil, I don't want to go back in time. Besides, it probably won't even work. The whole idea is too dangerous. Well, tough wontons, buddy. We need Jungle's treasure to pay back the debt this time machine has incurred, OK? Wait, so we're using your multi-million pound time machine to travel back to the past to risk our lives finding an ancient treasure that we only need because of your multi-million pound time machine? Ah, the circular nature of time. <laughs> Fascinating. Now, brush up on the old Mandarin, boys, because Daphne are going to medieval China. Now hop into the machine, everyone. Everyone in? Yeah. yeah. I'm not. Sorry, Willard. Where we're going, we don't need you. <laughs> Computer, take us to medieval China. <laughs> oh! Time, boys. Off to days of old. <laughs> Daphne wanna steal some Chinese gold Time boys Their machine state of the art Better hope they get out of there Before George Fox Oi! George! 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Nanjing City, the big dumpling, 1408 AD. I'm sorry I ever doubted you, Phil. This is incredible. With this power, we can meet our ancestors. Or see the dinosaurs. Answer history's unsolved mysteries. Look at some dinosaurs. Maybe even fix the mistakes of the past. Ride on the back of some absolute dinos. <laughs> Wait, stick a chopstick in it, you two. No mistake fixing and no raptor riding. We're here for the moolah. Did someone say my name? <coughs> Who are you? I am Mulan. <gasps> As in Hua Mulan, legendary warrior and the original gender bender? <laughs> Heroine, as strong as she is beautiful, in disguise as a male soldier to save her aging father from conscription. What? I am no woman. Behold my moustache. It's on your arm. <laughs> ah, Buddha damn it. That will teach me to sneeze into my elbow. <laughs> Fine, yes, I am a woman. But keep it to yourselves, you, you white devil, and you, you black devil, and you, you regular devil. <laughs> I'm here on a secret mission to steal the treasures of the Admiral Zheng Ha. Oh, Ma Zheng. Us too. Keep your voice down. That's Zheng He's ship coming into port now, back from his latest journey across the oceans, no doubt heaving with newfound treasures. Oh, I'm sure they won't miss a few chests of gold taken to alleviate the suffering of my countryside village, a poor and destitute relic of a bygone era. And we'll take a few bob to pay back the BBC. <laughs> what is this BBC? A poor and destitute relic of a bygone era. <laughs> the Admiral's ship has docked! Quick! We must get aboard post-haste. Hang on, how are we going to get past those armed guards on the gangway? Mm, worry not, little one. I have a plan. Well, that was easy enough. <laughs> Never underestimate the seductive power of a woman's charms. Yeah, I still don't think I needed the corset. <laughs> You have the figure of a pear, George, and you know it. Yeah, I know. I look like a pear, I know. Achoo! Peppa, damn this infernal spice trade. I can't wait till we leave the single market. <laughs> I'm hoping for a hard chexit. You there, halt. State your name and business. My name is Mulan. Uh, I mean, Mr. Mulan. Ah, yes. Mr. Mulan. We serve together in Xi'an. Apologies. I did not recognize you. Your mustache has moved. Ah, crap! Where's it gone now? It's on that man's forehead. Oh, sorry, Jason. Did I sneeze on you earlier? Yep. Now, please, state your business. We seek an audience with Admiral Zheng. My friends here are dignitaries from far afield. Malaysia. Abakaba. The Caribbean. Yes, man. And they say this pale one was raised by wolves. No, I support wolves. <laughs> oh, it, uh, it, it can be just as savage, to be fair. <laughs> Very well. You may enter. Behold, conqueror of the seas and defender of Nanjing, Admiral Chung Ha! Jung. That's Admiral Jung, but he's huge. <laughs> yeah, so I'm afraid my voice and body don't really match up. You're not wrong about that. Tell me about yeah, it. Yeah, takes some getting used to. <laughs> it is an honor to meet you, Admiral Jung. I have read many tales of your daring expeditions, of the trade and civilization you've left in your wake. Also, I love all the candles in here. Very relaxing. <laughs> yeah, thank you. They were all shipwarming gifts. I'm just trying to get through them, really. Would any of you care for some tea? Oh, tea. Good to see you lads got something from us Brits. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a brew if you're making one, Admiral. Sure, just let me get the pot. <laughs> Here you are, man of wolves. Cheers, Jungo. Thank you for allowing us an audience, Admiral Jung. It is no problem, Mr. Mulan. I like the clean-shaven look, by the way. It really brings out your flattened, suffocated man breasts. Uh, thank you, sir. Now what do you want? 
I understand your fleet has just returned bearing gifts of silks, perfumes, gold. He's got a couple of giraffes, too. <laughs> yeah, we saw their heads poking out the portholes. They don't look very happy down there. Get to the point, sirs. Yes, of course. My point is that such treasures must surely need an escort if they are to make it to the palace undisturbed. My three friends and I can be this escort. I already have the Imperial Army at my beck and call. What use have I for an androgynous junior officer, a chubby Malaysian, hey, a sinister West Indian, come out, and a flatulent wolf boy? Oi! It is weird how you always say oi before you fart, George. Listen, Admiral, your treasures are exotic and delicate. And a couple of them have really long necks. Yes, we saw the giraffes. Who better than a multi-ethnic exotic gang like us to understand these acquisitions and transport them safely? Mm, the voluptuous male soldier has a point. <laughs> Very well. I shall trust you for with my fortunes. Thank you, Admiral. We promise your gold is safe with... Oi! George, no! There's a candle right behind you! <laughs> Oh, God, the silks are on fire. It's spreading to the wooden beams. My ship! I'm gonna have you all killed! Damn, you three, you ruined everything! Guards! Fellas, I think it's time we exit stage, portside. What? Run! Oh, God, you've really done it now, George. Well, it's not healthy to hold in your trumps. Oh, well, I'm sure a spear in the gut would be much more nutritious. Shut up, you two. We need to get back to the time machine. There it is, by the entrance to the docks. Almost there. We're not gonna make it. Jump! All of you, jump! <laughs> Computer, take us to... Dinosaurs and all that jazz. No, George! No, you idiot! <laughs> Time, boys! What has George done? Just so he can have some dinosaur fun. Time, boys! God, when are we? I think you mean, when are we? <laughs> I did say when are we, idiot. Boys, welcome to Jurassic period. Sorry, the <laughs> Jurassic period. Actually, judging by the vegetation, it's probably the Cretaceous period. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely the Cretaceous period. Sure is beautiful, ain't it? Ah! What on earth? Who are you? Who am I? Why, I'm just a humble old 1950s lounge singer. Sick doobity day. <laughs> George, you bumass. When you said all that jazz in the machine, you confused it, and it picked up some creepy old croon on its way through the space-time continuum. <laughs> creepy? Oh, come on now, ain't no need for that. <laughs> That's a Velociraptor! Mr. Crooner, look out! Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> that Crooner just ate the Velociraptor. I sure did. Went down smooth as Mississippi molasses, too. <laughs> the name's Freddy Quavers. Freddy Quavers? Haha, <laughs> silly, I know. It's just a stage name, mind. Real name's Frederick Quavers. <laughs> But try selling a record with Frederick on the front. Why, it just ain't gonna happen. Zip, whack at his spoon. <laughs> oh, how do we get here? Trembling at the feet of prehistoric monsters with a carnivorous lounge singer tag along. All we were meant to do was travel back in time to medieval China, sneak on board Admiral Zheng He's ship, trick him into allowing us access to his gold, then somehow get the gold into our time machine, then take it back home to pay back the debt I incurred buying the time machine in the first place. It was all so simple. I knew this was a bad idea. Now think, everyone, what's the next step? Without Jung Ho's treasure, how are we going to get the money to pay off the beam? I've got an idea. Oh, my God, George is riding that brontosaurus. <laughs> Looks more like an epistocele cowdier to me, friend. Sorry, a doodle dee day. <laughs> 
So, you know how in King Kong, the expeditionists captured King Kong, then took him back to New York, and then charged people to see him, and they made loads of money, and everything ended fine? Uh... Well, I was thinking we do the same thing. <laughs> we do the same thing with this here Bronto boy. Bring him back to London and charge people a tenner to look at him, £50 to ride him, and £100 for ice cream. <laughs> Oh, sounds like a mighty fine griff to me. You can count old quavers in poop lapper do songs. <laughs> well, that's all very well and good, George and Freddie Quavers, but how are we meant to fit that thing in the time machine? Maybe we can draw some of its blood and clone it Jurassic Park style when we get back. That's my cue. Hup. Oh, Quavers, stop it. Why are you biting him? <laughs> there you go. Two ounces of pure brontosaurus blood, safely stored in a time-proof vial. Who needs syringes when you got vampire teeth? <laughs> Wait, Quavers, are you what wiped out the dinosaurs? <laughs> oh, I wish. They're an offence under God's creation. bible dee doo <laughs> Now give me that Fu Manchu moustache on your forehead. Ow! Quit your belly aching, son. Now, let me just wrap this tash around the test tube for insulation. And D diddly D and A, we're good to go. Ah! A T-Rex! Quick, to the machine. Oh no! Another T-Rex! Never go. Actually, that's a Giganotosaurus. Oh no! When we get back, I'll show you a slideshow presentation I made about the differences between the two. Oh no! It's just headbutted the time machine. It looks pretty damaged. Damn it! And I can't claim any insurance because the Cretaceous period is technically before the policy start date. <laughs> well, whatever we do, it better be quick. Much as I'd like to, I can't inhumanely destroy all these monsters of the past. Zap, zippity, cull. <laughs> We're just gonna have to get into the machine and try our luck. Well, at least the hatch still works. Computer, take us to... What, what the... Oh, no! It's glitching! Ah! When is it taking us to? Not where, Jason, my boy, but when. I said when. Does anybody listen to me? Oh, what now? What dreadful beast is waiting beyond the hatch this time? <laughs> ah! no, no, don't worry, it's a cow. It's just a cow. Sure is. Man's best friend. Beef. <laughs> Welcome to Glastonbury Farm, 1985. A music festival, eh? That's how we'll make our money back. We'll sell the most rudimentary of food items for extortionately inflated prices. <laughs> peanuts! Come get your peanuts! A fiver for a lick! <laughs> Ten or a suck! Twenty quid a swallow! Peanuts! Peanuts! Why are they all looking at me so weirdly? George, it's not clear you're saying peanuts. <laughs> Guys, wait. Glastonbury, 1985. My dad will be here somewhere. He was in a reggae band in the 80s. They supported the Rolling Stones at this very festival. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Telephone! No way! That's his band! Look, there he is. Dad. Dad. Leroy. Rock and Glastonbury! It's amazing to see my dad in his element like this. He was so proud of his music. He always said it was his greatest achievement, after having me, of course. This one is from my new album, my personal favorite, I Ain't Never Gonna Have a Song. What? Yes, man. Jar of the far right, brother. Yeah, yeah. I ain't never gonna have a song because life is too much fun. I can't believe this. My father never wanted to have me. I'm just some stupid accident that ruined his awesome rock star career. Hey, 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 Jason, come on now. You've ruined our careers too. <laughs> Look at all these people throwing their underwear and tent keys at him. Well, let's see how he likes a furry tube of dinosaur blood to the noggin. Hey now, careful, champ. Jason, no. We need that. Ugh. Oh, what the fuck? That boy just threw something at me. Those boys are disrupting our peaceful festival of love. Let's kill him! Oh, hidey, hidey, no. These hippies gone tear us limb from limb. Time to make like a uranium-235 isotope and split. Oh, no, the cows. They're stampeding. No, 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 no. They're heading for the time machine. Oh, them fat heifers have flattened all our gear. How are we going to get back now? Not to worry, fellas. I'll get us out of here. Hey, the 
go of me! Wait, get off, Quavers! Oh, what are you doing? Saving your sorry skins. Hold on tight now. Here we go. Squap boobity fly! <laughs> We're flying. We're actually flying. This is amazing. What's happened to the sky? Look at all the colours and the flashes and the numbers and faces of historical figures. Crap on a hat! Quavers <laughs> is flying us through the space-time vortex! Freddy, how are you doing this? Oh, now you know the old saying, a crooner never tells. That's not a saying. Hmm, must have fallen out of circulation. <laughs> Another victim of that damn rhythm and blues. <laughs> Here we are, boys. BBC Radio Theatre, present day. Wow, we're back. Correct, slugger. Right back to where you left off. Oh, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. Sweet, sweet, modern ground. Oh, I'll never leave you again. Mm -hmm. Quit kissing me, boy. <laughs> what do I look like to you, a Democrat? <laughs> wait, wait. What kind of crooner eats dinosaurs and flies through the chronosphere? Who are you, Freddy? Oh, this should answer your question. Let me just slip out of this tux and into something more comfortable. A cheap brown suit? <gasps> Father, father! <laughs> that is right. I am father, father. Your machine was hurtling through space time, and you clipped the wing mirror on my Volkswagen Passat. <laughs> I caught up with you to get your insurance details. But hell, I guess I just ended up having too much fun along the way. Well, thank you for all your help, father, father. It was my pleasure. And please, call me sir. <laughs> Now I shall fly away. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Father, Father. What an absolute gent. And what an adventure. Adventure? Disaster. We failed to get the treasure, failed to bring back the dinosaurs, and we even lost the time machine. I'm no sports expert, but I believe that's what is known in football as a hat rack. <laughs> oh, yeah. How are we going to pay back the BBC for the time machine now? Wait a minute. The hairy cylinder my dad gave me for Father's Day. It was the vial of Brontosaurus blood wrapped in Mulan's moustache from all those years ago. The circular nature of time. <laughs> Fascinating. It was a great gift after all. We use the blood to clone a dinosaur, make a fortune, and everything will be fine. Hang on a minute. Let me just have a look out the window. No. Father, father dropped us back to right after you threw it out the window. Oh, damn it! And right after the time machine left, so that's gone too. Oh, well. Hey, on the plus side, there don't seem to be any adverse butterfly effects from all our meddling with the past. Everything appears to be just how we left it. Uh, guys, you might want to look at this newspaper. Oh, my God. A reality TV star has become president of the United <laughs> States? <laughs> Give me that. What? President Kardashian? <laughs> it says here she's imposed a muslin ban. It's her least favourite fabric, apparently. George, what's that scurrying around in your jacket pocket? Hmm? Oh, this? <gasps> it's only a little baby velociraptor. I snuck one into my blazer as we were escaping the Cretaceous period. Thought I'd raise it for a pet and make it kind. <laughs> George, why didn't you mention this before? We can just charge people to see this dinosaur. We're saved. Are you sure you're going to be able to control that thing, George? It's dangerous. Oh, they're actually fairly harmless at this age. They only ever turn aggressive in response to loud, booming noises. Boys! I was just outside crying when I saw a figure fly out of the radio theatre. I had a closer look, and it was Father Father. I knew he was real. Oh, I'm so overjoyed I could just cry again. Old Willard's luck is turning around. Willard, no! Oh, oh, my face! I hate today! Oh, <laughs> oh, oh Willard! Thank you very much, everyone. Oh, We've been Daphne. Good, good night! night. <laughs> oh, Daphne Sounds Expensive was written by and starred Jason Ford, George Foreacres, and Phil Wang Dillian with Lewis McLeod, Elizabeth Tan, and Sir Willard White. The composer was Jeff Carpenter. The producer was Matt Strong. And it was a BBC Studios Pro Diddle Induction. Zam. Oi! George!
That was the brilliant and delightfully silly world of Daphne Sounds Expensive. And it was actually the second episode of the new series. So do check out episode one and soon three and four on BBC iPlayer Radio. And I'm still joined by Phil, George and Jason, also known as Daphne. Hello again. Hi. Hello, everybody. What a um, great episode. <laughs> do you have... Um, <laughs> I, know, I know it's obvious and therefore it is a dull question. Um, and hopefully you've rehearsed a perfect answer to it. Who is Daphne? Why are you called Daphne? Oh, boy. Well, where to oh, begin? Basically, is it a long story? Uh, it's, it's kind of a long story, but actually it's not that long anymore. For a while we tried to keep it mysterious, but there's not really a mystery about it anymore. It's essentially it's named after the character Daphne Moon from Frasier. Frasier, mm-hmm. yeah. Who features in uh, one of our sketches now, um, but for a while existed the only... The real Daphne Moon. The real it? Daphne Moon, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. um, no, it's a character I used to do purely to make Jason and Phil... Laugh. She does have a slightly strange. Yeah, well, she, well, she had, but this is what it evolved from is because she was so incongruous in Frasier, this kind of like debonair Seattle socialite, <laughs> and then this kind of northern, supposedly northern uh, physical therapist who lived with him. And so it initially was always me just being like, hello, Dr. Train, what are you up to? <laughs> just mispronounce everything. But well, that kind of eventually evolved into becoming this like, hello, Dr. Train, I'm going to go and eat me pies in the lake. <laughs> around the back of my house and the docks in Manchester and things like that. Um, yeah. um, but we, we bonded over that, so it's quite nice. <laughs> you were like, uh, I think she's funny too. And yeah, then you've all, we've yeah. all got the same sense of humour. Yeah. yeah. We sort of bonded over George's Goblin <laughs> and became <laughs> Daphne. Were you in yeah. different sketch groups before or did you do solo stuff? Like, Because I know, Phil, you do stand-up stuff. I am a stand-up. <laughs> I, yeah, I did not... I, I Just in didn't case like, someone thought you were a sketch performer. No, I, I didn't like working with other, peop- other people. Still don't. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. That is true. <laughs> most stand-ups don't like working with other people. I find most stand-ups are so used to, it's just me, I'm in control, that the moment they have to work with other people, they do get the side like, uh. I think also when when I think of you as Phil Wang, the stand-up, I think you're... Um, you're quite cool. Thank like you. Like you're a lot cooler than because we are like a little horrible little little horrible little group of lumpos. Yeah. And we're like <laughs> and I kind of see you like with the, you know like I sort of see you as a stand up like you know like sort of standing outside a club like sort of smoking a roly and like, like <laughs> I'm just off to go and do a sweet ten minutes guys. But and then like we're outside like, going, like, like me and Jason are like pretending to be jellyfish and go like, <laughs> like, like oh, yeah. the, the, the oh, hang the on my friends are here. The, <laughs> <laughs> the definitely demon has seeped into my stand up now. I'm a little more oh, that's nice though. Yeah it is nice. It is nice. Um, <laughs> throughout the show you mentioned it earlier but you joke a lot about being the UK's most diverse comedy trio and there's a lot of jokes about race and stereotypes. Have have you ever suggested a joke where the other two have gone, that's that's too far? Yeah, all, yeah, the, time. all, all the, time. the time. And we can't we can't tell you. <laughs> this. That's how, yeah, that's how bad it has been. Pretty bad for us to be to be like. No. There was a lot of cutting in the uh, radio show that was done on account of certain jokes that we decided. And were they more the slightly racial stereotype joke? Was that more was like everyone was like, uh, actually in front of an audience, this isn't funny? Well, actually it was funny in front of an audience, but what we realised oh, yeah. on the audiences, radio is audiences you Audiences laugh at racism. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they, they love do. it. They love well, it's because they can see you. They can see yeah. you're yeah. enjoying it. They can see <clears throat> you are in on it. Yeah, yeah. it's not just but so. On, audience on radio, that doesn't come across. <laughs> um, there's a lot of music in the show as well. I loved the sort of um, fake Bowie it was fake oh, Bowie, yes, yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Time yeah. Boys. Time <laughs> Boys <laughs> after days of old. I was really, like, genuinely enjoying it as if it was a Bowie track. Um, so it's you Over guys singing. Track. I yeah. couldn't quite work mm. out. Yeah, it so is. Like, yeah. Is that someone? It sounded very nice. Thanks. Oh, we're, thank we're, we're all, we're three of us are failed singers. We've all at some point <laughs> tried to be professional singers and, yeah. and, and didn't work out. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Phil, what, I don't what think band I did you did you try and have a band? Yeah, I had a band in university called The Light Wang Tastic. <laughs> <laughs> I was um, in a band at school called Better Than Sex. Oh, that's <laughs> perfect. That's Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. No, but if you were writing a character of 16-year-old boys and you gave them a band, that's what you'd want them to call the band? Better Than Sex. Better Than Sex. That's What kind of band are we talking? Is it like boy band? Or is it like full-on brass no, band? No, it was uh, boys and girls. And, uh, yeah, there was... There were strings, there were wow. uh, this woodwind. <laughs> you were, you were in an say. orchestra. You, know you were in an orchestra for Better Than Sex. There was one drum. Better Than Sex, not Sex. I oh, Better Than Sex? I thought you said Better Than Sex. No, that's why obviously I was like, not. That would be a terrible oh. name for a band. That's why I feel so good. Better Than what? Sex. Better Than Sex. I were Better Than Sex. 
Actually, that is better. I agree with Carrie. Yeah, now. I thought you were a teenage band called Better Than Sex, and you were a punk band. I was imagining. But we obviously had never had sex, and so it was all just <laughs> yeah. But it sounds like, it sounds like a great, a great like teenage name, <laughs> like a chastity band. Like better a, I were better sex. than sex. Yeah. You don't need to have sex. <laughs> Stay chaste. <laughs> Stay chaste. What happened to the band, Jason? <laughs> did they like uh, rouse internal? No, arguments? we all got on really well, but then we all went off to different places and didn't. Actually, in the first series, some of the band members. <gasps> were in the band. Amazing. Do you ever think, could have been the band instead of with these two? All the time. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> and why did you want music to play such a part? Because it's unusual, I think, for the sketch show. Well, it's not It's not quite a sketch show, it's got a kind of narrative, but it's the mm. sketches. It was unusual to have music play such an integral part to it. I mm. loved it. When people are like, oh, you're a racially diverse sketch trio... Um, people like, say that a lot, right? <laughs> people say that a lot. That you guys are a, a racial <laughs> diverse. Um, we, um, well, like a, we always say that a lot of our, we try and bring a lot of our, you know, bits of our background and stuff that's like been in our lives and whatnot into um, sketches and stuff that we write. And, and music has, has obviously been quite a big part of all three, and singing in particular has been a big part of all of our lives, I suppose. But then we also had this premise of Daphne Sounds Expensive, so how? what's the sort of um, extravagant way oh, yeah. of bringing music in and we'll just have our own band with original music? Mm-hmm. So I hope you don't mind me saying this, it did kind of remind me of the goodies. Oh, thank you. <laughs> who were the so, goodies, Phil? I, Phil. I, yeah, I mind you saying that because I don't know who they are. I've, just, I've heard of them. Why don't you know? explain to the listener? Oh, why I've, I moved to the UK in 2006 and so I have the cultural awareness of a ten-year-old, if you think about it. <laughs> um, I, and I don't know who the Goonies are. I don't know what Mr. Blobby is. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand. It. I think that's okay. I think that's okay. I'm very good friends. Because it comes up a lot. It comes up really? a lot. Really? Yeah. Mr. Blobby same, comes up a lot. I find Mr. Blobby comes up a lot, and I don't know what, it, what anyone's talking you about. You see that bead of sweat form on Phil's forehead. That reminds me of Mr. Blobby. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? Mr. Blobby was a great guy. Oh, no. There's, there's some things we go in Malaysia, like S Club 7. I, I love that Phil. Um, Phil learned his English from uh, basically American sitcoms. Oh, yeah. Which is why he sounds like a 1950s American lounge singer. <laughs> yeah, he sounds a bit like Freddie Quavers. I loved yes. Freddie Quavers so much. Freddie yeah. Quavers is kind of half based on Bing Crosby and half based on Phil. It's just a combination of the two. Yeah. Hey, I'm Phil Wayne. Hey, pal. Hey, hey, I'm Bing Crosby. Yeah. <laughs> we recorded the music for this series in the studio where Bing Crosby recorded his last album. No yeah, way. yeah, his last ever recording made of our studios. <gasps> There's a plaque there that says this hey, is it made of and we didn't, Yeah, yes. and we didn't know that. And, you know, that was, this was post, post Quavers. Post Quavers had come into the world, so it was a Do nice little thing. you think he, like, inhibit, like, Got mm, into Phil for I, a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, old buddy. Make sure hey. your record is made available, boy. <laughs> teach me to lick the walls. I did lick all the walls. Mm. Mm. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming in. You have been Daphne. Thank you for having us. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, everybody. That's it for this week's Comedy of the Week, but we'll be back next week with more comedy and also a documentary on movement and dance in Germany in the 1950s. Sank! No, we won't. It'll just be more comedy. <laughs> But if you do know a good documentary about dance and movement in the Germany 1950s, do send it our way. Sounds really fascinating. Um, also, PS, please subscribe. PPS, use the hashtag Comedy of the Week. And PPPPPS, you're just doing really great. Whatever you are doing, keep doing it because it's working. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.